Poolit is a recent identity consistency solution that was released recently. According to the official information, it employs an innovative comparative training method, which can generate images highly similar to the characters in the reference image with minimal impact on the original style, background, and composition of the images. It also supports post-editing after inserting identity information, such as adding glasses, or even changing the age or gender of the characters. In the paper, there are multiple examples comparing itself with Instant ID and IP Adapter, conveying a feeling of the pioneers are out of date, I am the superhero, which looks impressive. Coincidentally, Cubic, the author of the Comfy UI IP Adapter custom node, has implemented a native version of the PooLID plugin for Comfy UI, which has fewer restrictions and is more comfortable to use compared to the previous diffuser version implemented by Zozozo. Without further ado, let's give it a try and compare it with Instant ID and IP Adapter. The installation of this custom node is a bit complex. Besides the usual step of placing the files in the custom nodes directory, there are several points to note, as outlined by the author on the display page. Firstly, you need to manually download the pre-trained model of PooLID and place it in the comfyui slash model slash peelid slash directory. If this folder does not exist, you can create it yourself. EVA Clip will automatically download from Hugging Face at runtime, so ensure your network is smooth. This custom node's dependency library includes Fasexlib, which requires its own dependencies to be installed. One of them is FilterP. Installing this library directly using pip from python underscore embedded is likely to cause errors. If you encounter an error, you can separately download the installation package of FilterP. After modifying the version on line 18 of the setup.py file as shown in the picture, manually execute the installation through python underscore embedded slash python.exe setup.py install to install the filter p, then continue using pip install for fasexlib. Finally, you need to download the Antelope v2 model of InsightFace and drop it into comfyui slash model slash InsightFace slash model slash antelopev2. However, if you have previously installed Instant ID, you should already have this. If anyone encounters installation problems, feel free to leave a comment or message me, and I'll update my complete package when I have time. Now, let me demonstrate how to use PooLID. Load a default document image workflow. Keep the nodes unchanged here. Now, add the relevant nodes for PooLID. Double click on the screen to search for PooLID, select the Apply PooLID node and connect the model to the checkpoint node. Then, add the load PooLID model node. Here, there's only one model that you downloaded earlier, so just select it. Add the load EVA clip node, then add the load insight face node. I selected CUDA because I am using GPU. Next, add the load image node and choose your reference image. Poolid values the quality of the reference image so avoid using overly blurry images. There are three optional methods. Fidelity leans towards the characteristics of the reference character, style gives more space for large models to work, and neutral can only be used with low weights, otherwise, the quality of the generated image will be poor. Here, I choose Fidelity. Change the weight to 0.8. Then add a Riscale CFG node because PooLID's implementation uses IP adapter, and I want to balance the CFG. Next, select a checkpoint you like. Like Instant ID, PooLID also only supports SDXL. I choose Juggernaut XL. Fill in the prompts for positive and negative directions. Modify the image size. Define a seed value that I like and fix it. Set the iteration steps to 30, lower the CFG to 7, and use the conventional sampling method, dpmpp underscore 2m caris. Click Run. Accelerate a bit, and the result is out. At first glance, it looks quite similar. Let's compare it with the original image. What do you think? Poolid can also be used in conjunction with IP Adapter. Add an IP Adapter Advanced node. And to its left, add an IP Adapter Unified Loader node. Select this plus, then connect the model port of this node to the PooLID node. 
Add a load image node, choose a watercolor style reference, and let IP adapter perform style transfer. Perfect the connections, click run. Accelerate the run, and check the image. Not only does it retain the characteristics of the reference character, but it also switches to a watercolor style. I'm quite satisfied. Since I have both Instant ID and IP Adapter Face ID installed, let's show a comparison. Load a comparison workflow I've prepared. Look at the left side. I've reused the same checkpoint, prompts, seed values, output size, and other parameters. The top group of nodes is Pool ID, the middle group is Instant ID, and the bottom one is IP Adapter. Simply click Run. Speed up a bit. And let's take a look at the results together. At first glance, they all look quite similar. I'll add a facial similarity analysis scoring node to all three groups, with image 1 connected to the reference image and image 2 connected to the generated image. Click Run to see the results. This time, Pool ID has the highest score, but all three groups exceed 45. From the perspective of the scoring plugin, it can basically be considered the same person. Now let's modify the prompts and add sunglasses to verify Pool ID's claimed editability. Click Run. Speed up a bit. Although all three generated images still look very similar, Pool ID indeed is the only one that added sunglasses. I also experimented with changing the prompts to child, man, etc., and Pool ID's results for generating children and men were better, indicating that its claims about surpassing competitors might hold true. When encountering such demands, it's worth trying Pool ID. In summary, Pool ID lives up to its reputation as a newcomer. So far, its effectiveness and applicability seem excellent, and it's worth trying out. Its only drawback is perhaps, like Instant ID, it only supports SDXL. Well, that's it for today's video. See you next time.